Hi, I'm Dr. Boz, and I'm back again with a second in four-part series on what can possibly go wrong when you take on a ketogenic diet. This second part is all about poo. So if that grosses you out, you can skip to the next message. But if you have struggled with a ketogenic diet, I will bet that one of the symptoms you've had has to do with your bowels. And this post is gonna respond to some of those questions that I get from patients all the time. Let's start with what happens when your bowels slow down. That is constipation. In the first post about what can go wrong with a ketogenic diet, we talked about the keto flu and getting very dehydrated. That is another factor that causes dehydration in the bowels, which is constipation. The lack of all that water in a short period of time slows down what your bowels can do. One of the antidotes for the keto flu was salt, salted water and salt on your foods. This salt in a constipated state also helps those bowels to loosen up and move along. When I look at some of the other reasons patients on a ketogenic diet transition and do really well, they pee that first ketone, they're feeling okay until about day four at the point where they miss pooping. I think I must do a pretty good job of selling what the high fat meats are and how tasty they are because my patients seem to do that hook, line, and sinker. Nobody misses. But what they don't do such a great job of is adapting to some of those vegetables that do fit into a ketogenic diet. In fact, I've had some patients say, do people really eat that? <laughs> so I give you some suggestions about what can happen in a ketogenic diet on that first week when it comes to bowels moving too slow. So first we want you using salted water. That salt is really important to stay hydrated. Number two though is find some cabbage. Cabbage is one of those vegetables that my patients didn't eat much of before a ketogenic diet. And I encourage them, buy a head of cabbage and put it in the fridge. You can't believe the ways you can use that in a ketogenic diet. Stay in ketosis and it helps with constipation. Next, I move on to something called chia seeds. That's C-H-I-A, chia seeds. These little seeds are kind of like tapioca. You swallow them down and they expand to four or five times their size. This keeps the moisture in your guts from one end to the other and really does a great job at helping with constipation. In patients who've had a really significant trouble, I give them a formula of two tablespoons of chia seeds every two to four hours with a big glass of water. This doesn't take them out of ketosis. Boy, it really does help with that volume replacement in your bowels to give them a nice healthy bowel movement. Some of my patients have said, you know, doc, I got to the sixth tablespoon and I was tired of taking them, so I quit. But the next day, success. Moving on, if you've had constipation and you've tried the chia seeds, you've got some cabbage you've eaten and you've got your foods being salted and you're still struggling, this will pass, but in the meantime, reach for milk of magnesia. This is a over-the-counter supplement of magnesium that has marketed itself on the antidote for constipation. One of the salts that you lose the most of the first few weeks of ketosis is magnesium. Replacing magnesium with milk of magnesia will not only help your constipation, it will boost your magnesium levels within your body. I think it tastes terrible and of course it causes diarrhea, so patients don't usually take it long term. Their bowel gets into a healthy rhythm and they don't need it any longer, but it sure is a good trick to replacing magnesium, especially if you're constipated. Let's move on to the loose stools. In fact, when people tell me they have constipation with a ketogenic diet, I almost consider it normal. This should happen. But when patients come in and on that third or fourth day, they call the clinic saying, I can't handle this. I have such bad diarrhea. This diet must not be for me. That one sends up a little warning flag in my mind. Explosive diarrhea after you start a high fat diet tells your doctor and should tell you that there's something more going on. Most often the people with this side effect of diarrhea within a week of going keto have a hidden problem in their bowel. They may have complained of things like irritable bowel or a tummy ache that happens after they eat high fat, or simply they just have a sensitive stomach. Whatever term they use to describe it, it's usually a hidden symptom that has far worse consequences than, it, than they understand. You add back a high fat diet to these patients and bam, they suffer with consequences of explosive diarrhea to the point they call angry back to our office. 
the most important message I have for these patients is to wait, don't quit. Your body has a deep inflammatory problem that we don't understand hidden deep inside your bowels. Usually I'll send those patients off for some blood tests. And the one I'm most curious to look at is a vitamin D. Vitamin D is one of the essential nutrients that your body needs. And although you can get it from sunlight, if you have a problem absorbing fat, your vitamin D will be in the single digits. It should be 40 or 50, but a vitamin D in the low 20s or in the teens or heaven forsakes in the single digits tells me you are not absorbing fats correctly. This stays hidden because patients avoid fats. They'll tell their doctor, you know what, I just can't eat those fatty foods. Every time I do it, I get explosive diarrhea. The United States government has spent a lot of money trying to investigate this. It's quite a tricky puzzle to solve. It's hidden deep in the bowels of our, our bodies in a place that we can't just quickly look at and make a diagnosis. There's a really interesting study that was out of the 70s of a small population of people who had irritable bowel syndrome. They had bowels that didn't work right and it seemed to be chronic with a host of symptoms that are kind of vague but seem to match up pretty closely in all these patients. The patients were put on a high fat diet and it took six months for this side effect of diarrhea to go away. What was happening deep inside their bowels was the system to absorb those fats was finally turning on. It had been sleepy and dormant for a very long time, hidden in the grime of inflammation associated with inflammatory bowels. They had depression, they had high anxiety, and they had this strange tummy pain. Those were the irritable bowel patients. The longer they were on the high fat diet, the less of those symptoms were present. When I look at patients who call with this explosive diarrhea, my staff and I know those are the patients that need this anti-inflammatory diet the most. We encourage them to hold on, we'll help you. There are some ways to get through this, but if there's any profile of patients that needs a high fat diet, an anti-inflammatory diet more than the, than the average, it's my patients with irritable bowel syndrome or something called small bowel overgrowth. Let me explain that. Small bowel overgrowth reflects that you have an overgrowth of bacteria in your small intestines. The first section of your bowels is supposed to be sterile, as in no bacteria. That's kind of weird because your, your large intestine is got the most bacteria of our whole system. And when your intestines are working correctly, those two parts say, stay separate. But when your bowels get depressed or you have anxiety or you have malnourishment or high stress environments, the bowels start to do a little jig. They're, they don't move the food along as well as they're supposed to. And these little bacteria creep from the large intestine back upstream into the small intestine. Man, is that the perfect home for them. There's no competition. They are the only bacteria around and they overgrow dramatically. This causes an injury to that small intestine. That injury means they're not absorbing the foods they should, and that inflammation is in part what happens to irritable bowel patients as well as those who have small bowel overgrowth. These are the kind of patients that show up saying, Doc, I can't have your keto diet. I have explosive stools. Again, those patients are the ones I slow down the most for and really pour into the education that this diet is super important for their situation. So what do they do in the meantime? Don't worry, there are some tricks. The first antidote is Lomodal. Lomodal is an over-the-counter anti-diarrhea medication that isn't meant to be used long-term, but boy, it really helps with these patients. It will slow down the bowels enough that they can continue their life as their bowels start to heal. Taking time off of work because you tell your boss that I'm on this new diet and I can't be away from the toilet. Patients say, no way, that's too embarrassing. I'm not gonna tell my boss that. Instead, they use little tricks like taking Lomodal after every loose stool, and indeed, it will slow down the rate of their bowel movements. Next, I tell them to take kombucha tea. Kombucha tea is a fermented tea filled with live bacteria. This bubbly drink is an amazing way to replenish some of the bacteria that like to live in your bowels. This process is not often tolerated very well by my patients with irritable bowel. 
It's really important that those patients with irritable bowel or bacterial overgrowth, when they add kombucha tea, I want them taking a fourth of a cup a day. That's not very much. So not the big canister, simply a fourth of a cup a day. In fact, they're usually the patients that say, Doc, I can't take that. It makes me feel awful. Be aware there are lots of things changing when it comes to the bowels and bacterial overgrowth and a small bowel injury. That replenishment of bacteria can be a wonderful, cheap, easy, effective treatment for improving that symptom. Finally, I get to one that is a little difficult for patients to hear, but if you have an injury on your small intestine from not being able to absorb fats, and we're trying to wake up those cells to absorb the fats, to decrease the inflammation, sometimes the best answer is to give that bowel a rest. Yes, give that bowel a rest, which means stop eating. Intermittent fasting can be one of the best antidotes for my patients that suffer from small bowel troubles. When I introduce this idea and they've never been on a ketogenic diet, they think it's the most bizarre, awful assignment they've ever heard of. The fear of not eating becomes their new focus and their new reason for anxiety. But I encourage them, a bowel that is injured in that small intestine area, if we can't get that to start absorbing fats again, giving it a time of rest is a powerful treatment plan. I'll leave you with this quote, which is from Hippocrates the Greek philosopher who was known as the father of medicine. And he says this about intermittent fasting. Everyone has a doctor in them. We just have to help him in his work. The natural healing force within each of us is the greatest force in getting well. To eat when you are sick is to feed your sickness. I'm signing off today. Thanks for tuning in. I've got two more parts about what can go wrong with a ketogenic diet. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can check out my book any way you can on Amazon or Audible. Until next time, I'm Dr. Boz.